Why gold? That's what I want to know. Why is gold the chosen one? Of all the things we can dig out of the ground, why is gold the one that has prevailed as a money of choice over and over again for thousands of years? Let's find out. Today, we know plenty about gold. We know that it is a hedge against inflation. We know that it responds well to uncertain markets, unforeseen geopolitical events and systemic risk. And from this, we know that it can act as a safe haven and it is a borderless currency, accepted anywhere, unable to be devalued by a printing press. But this wasn't known in the ancient civilizations who valued it as much as we do. What made them decide it was the ideal form of money and store of wealth? And why has that sentiment remained? After all, of all the elements that are naturally occurring, why is gold the gold standard? Let's consider it from a practical standpoint. If you were choosing a physical form of money, what would be the criteria? You must be able to hold it. It is physically stable. It is safe to handle. It must be rare, but it cannot be too rare. And you must be able to manipulate its physical appearance. So of the 118 elements in the periodic table, on the far right, you have some of the elements that are very appealing from a currency perspective. They are chemically stable but there is a major drawback. They are the noble gases and the halogens. Whilst we do monetize gases today, you can't use gas as a form of currency. You can't mint them, plus they're colorless. Then you have the liquids. Again, not practical. And many of them are poisonous. Mercury, for example. What about the alkaline metals? Potassium, lithium, same issue. They're not practical. Alkalis are too reactive. No one wants to risk their weekly wages disappearing into a fizzy mess if they got caught in the rain or causing fires when exposed to the air, that would be lithium. And unless you're Homer Simpson, there's even less chance you'd be okay bringing radioactive materials home from work because no one wants their currency to kill them. So that rules out the awkward two rows below the periodic table. What about rarity? If you want a rare element, then you can forget about many of the elements at the top of the table. Likewise, many of the transition and post-transition, such as aluminium or titanium or iron, they come with their own sets of problems. You don't want to use iron because it rusts. Titanium requires ridiculously high temperatures before even considering if it can be melted. And aluminium is just far too soft. Then we could look at the noble metals. One of our criteria is that it can't be too rare. Well, as an example, osmium is not only the least abundant stable metal in the Earth's crust, it also, along with iridium, apparently arrived here by meteorite. So we can safely rule out that as an optimal currency. So we are left with rhodium, palladium, silver, platinum, and gold. As we are discussing why gold has been seen as precious and used as a store of wealth for thousands of years, then it's easy to see why rhodium and palladium weren't used. They weren't discovered until the 1800s. Platinum, whilst it was known, just wasn't practical in ancient times to be used as anything. It's only since the Industrial Revolution that we have been able to have furnaces that can go to temperatures required to melt it. That leaves us with silver and gold. As we know, silver has been used as money alongside gold. Both are considered good investments and stores of value. But the reason gold pips silver to the post is because it's less abundant in the Earth's crust than silver and because silver tarnishes. We like gold's appearance because it looks like gold. Consider rhodium, platinum, palladium and silver. In fact, many of the stable metals and they're all silver coloured. Of course, copper isn't, but copper doesn't stay copper for that long as it goes green when exposed to moisture. You can create a beautiful gold crown or a pharaoh mask or simple gold coins and they still look like gold thousands of years later. The difficulty in mimicking this aspect is another reason for its attractiveness as a store of wealth. And if you'd like to find out more about gold's attractiveness as a store of wealth and why it has stood the test of time and why people continue to invest in gold today, then check out this video now.